All right, hi everybody, my name is Ryan with API3. Uh, we're gonna talk today about the shift, the, the industry trend and shift for, toward for, first party oracles, uh, which is obviously a, a key aspect of API3. So I'm gonna start off by just covering what is an, ortic, an oracle in case anyone is slightly unfamiliar. So smart contracts, which run on blockchain, need off-chain data, but they can't call web APIs like regular web applications can. The way smart contracts work is many nodes in a distributed network do the same computation at the same time on the same input data, and they all have to agree on the results in order to move forward. If the nodes don't have the exact same input data, then it doesn't work and time on the blockchain can't move forward. Even if all the nodes attempted to call the same API, the same off-chain API at the same time, there's nothing that guarantees they'll get the same result and one node would have no reason to trust the inputs used by the other nodes. Because of this distributed nature of smart contracts, the need for all the nodes to have the same inputs and for the network, the need for the network to reach consensus on the results, smart contracts are effectively isolated from the internet. They are isolated from the world. They can't access data outside of the blockchain. So something has to put real world data that smart contracts need on chain so that all the nodes have it to use as their inputs when they do their computations. And this thing that decides the correct value of real world data and puts it on chain is called an oracle. Doing this correctly, being an oracle and putting deci deciding the correct value and distributing it to the blockchain correctly without sacrificing the benefits of using blockchain in the first place is a very difficult problem. And this problem is referred to as the oracle problem. So I wanna give a brief history of the oracle problem because I, I think it's actually really interesting. The Oracle problem is an interesting issue in blockchain, but the idea didn't originate in the blockchain space. Long before the Bitcoin white paper was released, the concept of an Oracle was actually used in software testing. So in software testing, you execute code, the code that's being tested or the code under test with given inputs and you verify that it produces the expected result. And the thing, whatever it is that decides whether the test has passed or failed was referred to as the Oracle. The Oracle problem in software testing is also difficult to solve. Uh, I don't know if anyone has been involved in software testing, but it's uh, it's a pretty complicated uh, industry in itself, especially when testing distributed systems, and even more so if you have to test an online system in real time. And blockchains are online distributed systems. So notice the similarities, and it's pretty obvious why the Oracle problem on blockchain is very difficult to solve. The earliest reference I can find to the Oracle problem on blockchain is from a Reddit post on December 13th, 2014. And the user described the problem with decentralized applications running on the Bitcoin network that depend on external data to make their decisions. To quote the user who wrote the post, he said, I think of it as the Oracle problem. They went on to discuss how hard this problem is to solve and that any solution is likely to be susceptible to being gained. And with that, I guess the gauntlet had been laid and everybody wanted to solve the Oracle problem on blockchain. An early example of an Oracle, of a blockchain Oracle was Augur, the Augur prediction market, which was actually manual where humans were crowdsourced to answer questions. And then the winning answers were used in the, in the on-chain smart contracts. Later came programmatic oracles that would actually get their data from the web or APIs. There was, there was one called Oracleize that would pull data from the web instead of from humans programmatically. And then of course, Chainlink, where they said, hey, let's decentralize the Oracle nodes uh, because we're running on a decentralized blockchain and they run multiple Oracle nodes at the same time and then aggregate that data together into a single feed. Now, as in software testing, a lot of progress has been made in the blockchain Oracle problem, but it hasn't been solved. Uh, and I don't know that it ever will be solved. The Oracle technology has made some pretty sophisticated advancements, but there is no general solution to the Oracle problem. Uh, rather, and this is how everything works, engineer, engineering trade-offs have been made that gain in one area by sacrificing in another to fit different use cases and situations. So theoretically, Oracle data can come from a wide variety of sources, but practically, it pretty much always comes from web APIs. And in an effort to avoid having decentralized applications or smart contracts rely on individual API providers, which we would, we would consider that to be somewhat centralized, the most common approach to the Oracle problem has been to aggregate data from multiple oracles together into a single data feed. But 
the data come the data that the oracles get as their inputs comes from web apis so in order to create a decentralized oracle the oracle nodes uh, sorry to, in order to create a decentralized oracle oracle nodes were introduced that operated separately from the api providers to decentralize from the api providers and since those oracle nodes are operated by third parties rather than the api providers that own the data we call them third party oracles and third party oracles uh, they have benefits but they also introduce some new problems one of those problems is it's difficult to tell which apis the data came from in the first place because there's this layer of third party nodes in the middle it's not transparent where the data came from the original goal was to decentralize the data but that only happens that's only achieved if the data comes from multiple independent apis and since developers of smart contracts can't see which apis the data came from in these third-party oracle nodes it's very difficult or impossible for them to know that the data itself is actually decentralized they can only see that the third-party oracle nodes are decentralized and in practice those nodes sometimes or even often get their data from the same apis so the data itself isn't as, as isn't as decentralized as we might think it is even though we're getting it from a decentralized oracle network and for some data there is only one reputable source to get it from in the first place so even if you're getting it from multiple or even if your smart contract is getting it from an aggregation of multiple oracle nodes the data itself is rather centralized by nature Another issue is that since smart contract developers can't see where the data came from, it's difficult for them to judge the quality of the data. So with that, in an attempt to avoid trusting API providers, we've now created a situation where we trust a third party Oracle network to source high quality data and then aggregate it for us both accurately and honestly. But node operators are motivated to keep costs low by sourcing low cost data, which is often lower quality, so it's subjective. Uh, and it's really ideal for the smart contract developer if they can see the original source of the data and judge the quality for themselves. Finally, a network of third-party oracles does come at additional cost. Each node has operational costs and the node operators want to make a profit. If developers can't see that the data is coming from multiple independent high quality API sources, then there's really no way for them to know that they're getting benefit in return for that additional cost of using the decentralized oracle network so this is just a little backstory an interesting story one of the founders of api3 barack ben ligure wrote an article on medium called it's what's well, actually called the gordian knot called the oracle problem in which he compares the oracle problem the blockchain oracle problem to the legend of alexander the great where king midas had tied a knot that seems to be impossible to untangle Rather than untie it, Alexander cuts it in half with his sword. Burak's analogy captures a trend that we're seeing in the Oracle space. Solving a problem or solving the Oracle problem with decentralized third party oracles is kind of like trying to untie the Gordian knot. Rather than continuing to struggle with an impossible problem, Alexander used a more pragmatic approach and reduced the problem to something more simple. He cut the knot in half. In blockchain, we now acknowledge, or at least some of us acknowledge, that the challenge, the challenge and the bottleneck to getting decentralized data on chain is in finding multiple independent high quality API providers. It's not with the Oracle nodes. So decentralizing the Oracle nodes doesn't necessarily solve the problem that is the bottleneck. So the pragmatic and honest approach is to simplify the Oracle problem down to the API connectivity problem. Rather than opaque networks of third-party Oracles, smart contracts need transparency and direct access to the APIs that provide the data. The solution is for the API providers themselves to be the Oracles. And we call this first-party Oracles. So when the API provider who owns the data runs the Oracle themselves, it's a first-party Oracle. When the third party or when a third party who doesn't own the data runs the Oracle, that's a third party Oracle. And what we're seeing is a clear trend toward first party Oracles. Why is that? Intuitively, the advantages of first party Oracles over third party Oracles are kind of obvious. All other things being equal, getting data directly from a reputable high quality source is preferable to getting it from third party middlemen, even if there are several of those middlemen aggregating their data together. 
leading Oracle projects are acknowledging this. Chainlink is recently promoting their Oracle being run by, a rep by reputable API providers such as AccuWeather. API 3 and Pyth are both, both using first-party Oracle architectures, and the list kind of goes on and on. Um, it's, it's clear that third-party Oracles are catching on. But this isn't just being driven by this sudden realization that first-party Oracles are better than third-party Oracles. That's not really, that's not, that doesn't make sense. The, in reality, something else has changed. And actually, we've identified two things have changed that enable first-party Oracles to finally become reality. So the first thing, the first big change is that blockchain is now more mainstream. A few years ago, most reputable traditional businesses were barely thinking about blockchain and smart contracts. Now, many of them are jumping in head first. They used to be afraid of blockchain, and now they're just FOMOing in. They don't want to be the one that they don't want to be the last one to, to adopt Web3 and, and to access Web3. So that's one change. The other change is that Oracle nodes used to be more difficult to run. So now, today, it's easier for a business to run their own Oracle node with little to no cost or maintenance. And if they don't want to, they don't even have to deal with cryptocurrency to get paid for their data. And that wasn't the case just a few years ago. So these two changes in the blockchain landscape are monumental. Now, data and API providers are both motivated and able to be Oracle providers themselves and deliver their data directly on chain to smart contracts. So I guess, what are the consequences of this? Well, it means the API providers who own the data can offer it directly and transparently to smart contracts. The middleman is no longer needed. If you need decentralized data feeds aggregated from multiple sources, they can be aggregated securely and transparently on the trustless blockchain rather than off-chain in an opaque network of third-party oracles. Now, does that mean there's no more reason to have third-party oracles, or is there still an opportunity for third-party oracles? No, I don't think so. I think the, or I guess the, there is an opportunity for third-party oracle oracles. Of course there is, and of course they'll continue to to exist. And and I would even say, in my opinion, they'll continue to grow rapidly because the entire oracle space is growing rapidly. But as a result of these two key environmental changes, third-party oracles are no longer the only feasible option. Just like with the traditional web, companies can now decide whether they want to outsource their web hosting to third-party providers, or they can do it themselves in their own cloud computing accounts, such as AWS or Azure. And each company, each API provider will have to make that decision themselves, which is the best fit for them. But there is one important difference to consider. In Web3, minimizing reliance on trust, or being trustless, as we say, is considerably more important than on Web2. It's part of the ethos of Web3. So data source transparency and avoiding middlemen is the most practical way to minimize trust. And so for that reason, I think we're going to see an acceleration of this trend toward first party oracles and away from third party oracles. In the marketplace, what we're seeing is a massive uptick in both the depth and breadth of how smart contracts use off-chain data. The most heavily used data feeds are even more in demand than they used to be. And at the same time, new use cases are, that require off-chain data are popping up every day very frequently. For example, some of those use cases are parametric insurance, escrow contracts, logistics. The transparency, efficiency, and scalability of first-party oracles is going to play a key role in making those use cases a reality. So thank you. That's all I have to say. And uh, now I'd love to open up the floor to questions. 